Um, just the, the last couple of games, they've been doing a great job of getting their hands up. Um, you know, even the balls that, that you see aren't getting tipped. Um, you know, their hands are up and and getting close to the ball. So um, you just have to give credit to to OU's defensive line of of getting their hands up, fighting off the the pass block, and and uh, getting their hands up. It seemed like you had pretty good protection in that one, but and it's on Saturday, but not not a lot of open guys down the field. How did they do as good a job as anyone's done this year in terms of covering up uh, the receivers for four quarters? Yeah, I think so. You know, as as we went back and watched again this morning, there wasn't a whole lot of just open guys. You know, those guys that had a step, um, but. As far as you see, you know, two steps, you know, two yards uh, open on a guy, you, di you didn't see a lot of that. And um, you have to give credit to, to their guys. They did a great job. They mixed up coverages a lot on us and and just played us played us hard on the outside all night. And talk about, I guess, the job those your tackles have done in protection the last the last couple weeks. I know Missouri, they got a couple times, but I think just one sack. And then this week, none against a team leading the country in sacks with those two bookhead guys. Talk about Jake and Luke. Uh, they're doing a great job for us. You know, they continue to improve each each week. Um, you know, they they were you know, stellar from the time they came on campus um, last year, and they continue to improve. Uh, both really big athletic guys that they want to be great, and you know, I think that's the biggest key is they work each week to get better. Um, they hate giving up a sack, hate giving up a pressure, and uh, you know, it's it's really a a comfort to me to have those guys on the, on the outside of the blocking for them. What's going to be the key to being successful up there this week, you think? Don't turn the ball over. You know, I think everyone knows that. Um, you turn the ball over four times on the road, it's a top ten opponent, it's not going to be good. So uh, I think that's the key is we have to focus on this week is is being clean, um, focus on the details and not turn the ball over. I mean, I'm sure you all focus that on every week. So what exactly went wrong at Oklahoma with the four turnovers? I guess um, I, I could say three turnovers for you. I mean, you can say what you want, but there's a couple, couple different things that go wrong, and, and it turns into a pick, you know. So, um, bad throw location, tip ball, you know, whatever it is, um, you know, a number of things can happen to, to turn into a pick. Well, you know, uh, we talk about all the time being able to respond to adversity, and you know, we had two uh, first half uh, turnovers that, that I, I think our guys did a good job. Both of those, we went three and out. Uh, one time we knocked him back out of field goal range. Um, the other time we three plays and we, we forced him to kick in a field goal. I uh, was proud of that effort, and uh, uh, I expect our guys to do that every time. Uh, in, in the second half, um, I think the first time uh, they had the ball down there, we had a blitz called, and, and, and their kid, uh, 16, makes a heck of a one-handed catch. Uh, you know, it's going to happen sometimes when you have a short field that you know becomes a touchdown as opposed to a 30-yard gain. Um, they got the ball back there a couple more times, and again we had a uh, a call. You know, we, we didn't pressure that second time, uh, and our, our our safety was supposed to be in a half field coverage, and he, he got caught in the disguise and uh, uh, didn't get deep enough. And you know, uh, it was a play we anticipated, and we talked about, hey, they're going to take a shot here. Uh, we didn't execute well enough. Um, you know, it's something we, we we try to address. It's something that we practice and. Uh, uh, we got we got to get better at. It. Coach uh, Charlie Thomas, another guy who played his way in the starting lineup. <coughs> Talk about just the inside linebacker the flux there, and was he the only guy you you, you, you worked there at inside linebacker there? Uh, no, we, I mean we worked you know two deep, uh, two and a half deep during the week of practice. Uh, Stephen Jenkins did not practice; uh, uh, he was injured, and so uh, he was kind of a back burner guy for us. Uh, and so Charlie uh, practiced. Uh, a, a bunch in there. Uh, Donnie Bag, Sean Ward, and Garrick Williams also practiced in there. But uh, Charlie had a good week of practice, and, and uh, for the most part, played pretty well in the game. You know, he's got some stuff he's got to clean up. But uh, I was pleased with his effort during the game. Did Charlie come back over and No, he's he's still a fullback. Did you said last week you all tried maybe some new guys in there? Did you or not last week? Well, we we, we practiced Sean Porter in there, um, and and Sean had a good week. Uh, you know, Sean's one of our, our most productive players, and one of our concerns was if you play Sean inside, you know, do you lose that productivity that you have from him as an outside linebacker and as a rush guy specifically? And so uh, our, go our plan going into the game was to, to start Charlie 
uh, see how he did, and, and if we needed to, put Sean in at, at an inside linebacker position. Uh, but Charlie played well enough for most of the game that, that uh, until he got tired there in the third quarter when we were going back to back series, we probably should have done a better job of, of substituting getting Steven in the game uh, a little bit quicker. Uh, but Sean would have been our, our, our go-to guy if uh, Charlie didn't you know, play as well as he had on Saturday. What does Sean bring to the table at inside linebacker? Well, I think he's a confident football player. Um, he's a guy that uh, uh, no matter what position he plays, he's very, very smart. Uh, doesn't have near the reps as those other guys playing that position. So that part was tough. Uh, Coverage-wise, he understands our coverage concepts. When we run inside linebacker blitzes, he can do those fine. Uh, we were a little concerned about his run fit, you know, just because he hasn't had the experience in it. But uh, he's a guy that uh, is a very versatile football player, and, and uh, he's a very unselfish guy that, you know, he knew that it probably would affect him productivity-wise, you know, because he practiced all week as an inside linebacker. Uh, but he was a whatever it's for the team kind of a guy. Uh, he, he wasn't concerned about that. Tim, you always talk about mixing it up on Saturday. It seems like Jones didn't get comfortable. So you look back over the film, is that because you guys made, consistently made the right calls more or the defense just played, played well and played better, more physicality? How do you rate what happens to went so well. Then. Yeah, I, I think calls are overrated. Uh, you know, we, we do try to mix things up, but I think our guys <coughs> felt comfortable uh, as far as our package going into that game and played fast. Uh, you know, I think sometimes, you know, when, when we play a team like, like Oklahoma, they're similar in structure a lot of ways that we are in practice. You know, they base out of one back, one tight. Most of the game, they'll go to some two back stuff, and so our guys are used to that versus some of these spread option teams that are completely empty and uh, spread you out a little bit more where our guys maybe aren't as comfortable in that. And so uh, I think our guys just played fast, uh, one, because it's late in the year and, and, and we're, we're getting it more, uh, but two, they just they felt comfortable with what we had going in and, and what we were facing, even though it was very talented. How you change this week and get a little completely different team than what you faced, uh, what's the challenge with Kansas State? So well, they're, they're an excellent – physical running football team. Uh, you're you're going to get a lot of quarterback run. Uh, their, their quarterback, uh, 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 Colin Klein, I'm going to say Colin Klein, but uh, uh, Colin Klein does a great job. He's, he's a physical presence. He's 6'5", he's 230. Uh, really you know, surprising to, uh, how fast he is. You know, He's kind of a long-legged, long-striding guy, uh, but he runs away from people. And he's got really good feet and vision and breaks a ton of tackles. And so uh, he's, he's a major concern for us. Uh, they're they're going to do a lot of what teams will do in a wildcat situation. Uh, they'll, they'll sub in a, a running back. And they do some of that also uh, to give him a break. But, but uh, he runs the, uh, the, the running game as well as any quarterback out there right now.